Japan's new administration under Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is working on transforming its energy policies. The trade minister says the country will continue exporting nuclear infrastructure after ensuring that it's safe. <laughs> Sometimes just think funny things. <laughs> Japan has accumulated technology and human resources related to nuclear power. We would like the chance to put these to peaceful use. Meeting partners' requests and ensuring safety will be the major premises of this effort. And we also want to keep exporting our nuclear power infrastructure. Japan has been promoting exports of nuclear power generation facilities even after the nuclear accident in Fukushima. The previous administration, led by the Democratic Party, has signed pacts with countries such as Vietnam and Jordan in 2011, enabling it to transport nuclear technology. Motegi's comments suggest the new government is willing to follow the previous government's policy. Japanese government officials say some workers involved in the nuclear cleanup in Fukushima dumped radioactive material. They say they'll monitor the workers more closely to try to stop them cutting corners. The contractors have to collect and store the water they use. Government officials looked into reports that some dumped the water in ditches. They questioned workers and discovered five cases of dumping. The officials are looking into 14 other reports of shoddy work, but can't identify the locations or the workers. The officials say they'll quadruple the number of inspectors on the ground to 200. They're urging citizens to let them know if they see contractors cutting corners. They say they'll exclude any violators from public contracts. NHK has learned that some contractors in Japan failed to pay a special allowance to workers who receive radio, who remove rather radioactive fallout from the Fukushima nuclear accident. The Japanese government has commissioned major, major construction companies to carry out the decontamination, but the actual work is performed by subcontractors. The government pays a risk allowance of $110 per day in addition to a daily wage to people who work in places with relatively high levels of radiation. NHK found that two subcontractors hired to work in a city in Fukushima Prefecture did not pay the allowance. Several workers say they were told they would receive $110 per day with free accommodation and meals when they started their jobs in mid-2012. They say their employers did not mention the special allowance. The workers say that between November and December, the subcontractors presented them with a new document about their working conditions. The allowance was paid on paper, but the daily wage was cut to $67 with accommodation and meal expenses deducted from the payment. Well, it seems as if the longer this system of cheating workers continues, the less people would want to do this job. No shit. The subcontractors reportedly asked the workers to sign the document as if it were the original. The employers reportedly have admitted it was a fake. The workers say their employers apparently tried to conceal the non-payment of the risk allowance. The labor ministry says at least eight companies failed to make the necessary payments. A group of researchers is urging people in Japan to think about worst-case scenarios. They say it's the only way to prepare for a huge quake in the Pacific, one that could claim more than 300,000 lives. NHK World's Takaomi Ohashi has more. These researchers launched a study group last year. They are experts on disaster prevention and reduction. They've been studying the quake that devastated Kobe 18 years ago. Kansai University professor Yoshiaki Kawata is leading the study. 
and the call to be prepared. Quake survivors cannot carry on without water, food and fuel. That'll be a vital issue. The experts' main concern is water. They expect a severe shortage after the big one strikes. A major quake off the Pacific coast could affect the most populated area of Japan, leaving 50 million people in desperate need of water. The group estimates these areas will need a total 100,000 kiloliters of water on day one. In all, companies have about 560,000 kiloliters of bottled water in their distribution systems. Researchers say quake survivors will run through that supply in about one week. The 1995 quake demonstrated how quickly vital supply lines break down after a major disaster. Many survivors in Kobe had to collect water from burst pipes. These scenes could be repeated on a much bigger scale in the next major quake. To be prepared, experts say the Japanese need to think about worst-case scenarios. Food and water shortages could set off looting. No looting has been reported in Japan, even during major disasters. But we must assume it can happen, depending on the situation. The 1995 quake was a wake-up call. Local governments began stocking up on water and other supplies. But it may not be enough. They are now reviewing their emergency preparedness plans. Distribution networks are a key area for review. Local governments depend heavily on supply chains built by the private sector. Local officials have signed deals with retail chains. The companies have agreed to supply essential goods in times of disaster. Retail giant, the Eon Group, held a nationwide drill to test its preparedness. The group had signed nearly 200 pacts with municipalities expected to be hit by the huge quake. We're still short of bottled water. Do you have a stockpile? Simulations are needed to determine the demand for relief supplies. The data obtained should be the basis for discussions involving both public and private sectors. Based on the estimated number of evacuees, we should examine the amount of supplies needed. The central government has set up a council to identify challenges expected to arise during the disaster. Officials from local governments and private companies are taking part. It will be difficult to minimize damage by taking conventional approaches. I believe we will be able to find effective measures by studying ways to avoid the worst-case scenario. The panel's mission is to identify and assess the risks that Japan would face. It believes the only way to minimize damages in the case of a giant disaster is assuming the worst possible scenarios. Takaomi Ohashi, NHK World, Kobe. An NHK opinion poll suggests more than 40% of respondents support Prime Minister Abe's move to review Japan's nuclear policy. Abe says he'll re-examine the former government's plan to end nuclear power by the 2030s. About 1,100 people responded to NHK's telephone survey over the weekend. The survey asked about what should be the government's top priority. Almost 40% said economic measures. Nearly 20% said reconstruction from the March 2011 earthquake and tsunami. 15% cited social security reforms. And 10% chose energy policy, including nuclear power. 43% of respondents said they support Abe's plan to review the policy of zero reliance on nuclear power set by the previous government. 21% were against it, while 30% were undecided. The survey also asked about Abe's call for relaxing the condition for a constitutional amendment. An amendment must be supported by at least two-thirds of lawmakers in both chambers of the Diet. 
The prime minister wants to lower that requirement to a majority. Just over 20% said they are in favor of the proposed change. 34% were against and 40% were undecided. Japanese researchers may have found a way to repopulate endangered fish species using frozen cells. They've managed to produce landlocked salmon by transplanting sperm cells into trout. Scientists have already shown some types of fish can receive sperm-producing cells from other species. But the researchers from Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology took this one step further. They used frozen cells. The researchers transplanted frozen cells from landlocked cherry salmon into rainbow trout. The male trout produced salmon sperm, while the female produced salmon eggs. The scientists then allowed the fertilization of the eggs. The result? Cherry salmon. Eggs and sperm can be created from frozen testes at any time. Endangered fish around the world could be saved from extinction using this technique. The researchers used a similar technique to produce Japanese char from brook trout.